Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, can you speak more about the jinn sahabi and their role during the time of Imam Mahdi alayhi salam in the last days? This is like the most popular subject of jinn. <laughs> Whenever we talk about it, it always comes back to jinn. This is Raj's problem. He only likes talks about the jinn. <laughs> Like, what are you talking about? I can't tell the stories of jinns. <laughs> He's very scared by them. <laughs> said, those are spooky. So alhamdulillah, their lives are thousand, two thousand, three thousand years. So they are, they are still in existence. So jinn races that are our companions of Prophet they are in existence and their, their presence is, is is immensely important. There are, we've described before, even from the, the two jinn of Ashab al Kaf are in existence. And their presence in Naqshbandiya and the preparation for the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi is very important. So, these are, these are the blessings that Allah has given to the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad. So that these holy companions, their, their presence is uh, immensely important and that they, they carry that reality and the gift of that companionship. So we are, we are a blessed nation to have uh, such souls and such realities that continuously dress and bless the community inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah so, Sayyidi, what is uh, maturity in tariqah, Sufism? How to know a person is matured level and developed? Forgive my ignorance. Mature. We have a talk on Rijal and Abd and the importance of being within spiritual trainings. That the facilities in which Allah give them spiritual trainings through the tariqahs and specific branches of the tariqah that are responsible for training individuals. And that those trainings and the practices, the meditation, all of these are meant to bring about an energy. And the ones whom can contain that energy and keep with their practices, they are maturing, rushed in the way of Allah So most important because many times when we, we talk of something People with bad character are thinking, well, what about the shaykh is different? So this has to be an important, I think that maybe the guys can make it into a visual. That most people, 99.9% .9 of people, they live their life as a seed. They're a seed. So then you have images of like a whole bunch of seeds all together, like big seeds, avocado seeds because those are more graphic, not small little. Non-threatening, <laughs> but show the big avocado seed, and they just sort of hit each other, ding, 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 trying to teach, trying to talk, trying to advise. And then the student comes and says, "Well, oh, well, why do you talk? And why do? You? Because the shaykh is not a seed. So uh, the real shaykhs, or who have been trained individuals, their whole life was about their seed was planted." And they were sent into many seclusions. As a result, the soil, which is the Muhammadan reality, rips apart the seed. And Allah shows this spirituality in all creation that we're looking at. The seed is of no benefit, the seed bears no fruit, and people are content being a seed. The tariqahs come and say, why you don't plant yourself? That which you're seeking of a reality is not a seed. So go down into the soil. As soon as the soil covers the seed and what happens then? It begins to dissolve 
the seed. But the seed plants a seedling, plants its reality in the soil. Well, that's a big reality, right? You as a seed have no significance and you put all the seeds together you can't tell what, which one is which, pear seed, apple seed, or watermelon seed, big seed, small seed, they don't look like seeds. Not beautiful, nothing, just look like a seed. And most of them are toxic if you try to eat a lot of seeds. But what makes the seed beautific is when it goes into the soil. And that analogy is that the soil will bring about its reality and its purpose and that everything has a phase of death. Don't think that because you were born you're alive, you're actually walking dead because you really didn't achieve what Allah wanted us to achieve, was that we were supposed to come into the earth and then plant ourselves, isolate ourselves, seclude ourselves, know ourselves. As a result of training and knowing and meditating and contemplating, we're a seed being planted into a Muhammadan soil because it's the quality of the soil that brings about the fruit that's going to grow. Because you can plant the seed in a desert uh, with sand, nothing coming. So it's actually the, the quality of the soil that determines the, the reality of that seed and how it's going to come out. So the best of soil, the best of realities to be planted in is Muhammadun Rasulullah wasallam. You can't plant in Allah because La ilaha illallah is very clear. There is nothing but Allah, don't plant yourself here. You're not partner with Allah, you're not like Allah, you don't breathe with Allah, you're, you're not belonging there. We believe and we belong with Muhammadun Rasulullah wasallam. So when that seed plants, itself through its isolation and years of training, you go back there's no more seed. The seed has evolved to the next level and now it's a tree. So then you have an image of a whole bunch of seeds that sit together and you have an image of a big tree next to it. The tree is significant because the tree is the shaykh and it's deeply rooted in that soil of Muhammadun Rasulullah, it means it's deep in its guidance. A wind doesn't come and blow it, it's not a flower on a rock but it's a tree that's roots are extremely deep, they go deep into the soil of that haqqaiq. And the benefit of the tree is actually now people can sit under the tree and take the fruit and its fruit is endless. And that's why Allah describes as much as the, the ink are like oceans, I can make the ink like oceans endless amounts of ink and all the trees like pens, my words won't ever change or any finish. Means all those haqqaiqs and realities, they never finish. Just like you go to a season and there's no fruit on this earth, why? Because this cycle of rejuvenating, planting, rejuvenating is Allah's karama, is Allah's miracle for us to witness every day because we see the sign outside before we understand the sign inside. So when Allah said, look how this tree became an immense tree and look the thousands of fruits that are on that tree and each of those fruits now have their own seed and if they plant themselves that tree <coughs> can have thousands of representatives, right? Because if each of them plant themselves well then they'll all become trees. And that was the idea of the turuqs. So in hundred years ago the shaykhs had some of them a thousand representatives, they were all shaykhs. They all went into seclusion, they all planted themselves in realities and the tariqahs were expanding and vast everywhere. But now nobody wants to plant themselves and then these trees are dying because of age and if they die there's no tree to replace them because it's just a bunch of seeds and that's when we know that we're towards the last days. When Prophet described to companions that knowledge would be lifted. The holy companions were so upset that why Qur'an would be taken from the earth, he said, no, that when the alams come and disseminate knowledges they'll begin to die in which there won't be a replacement. 
And as a result these knowledges and realities are being lifted from the earth. So it means they become a, a bunch of trees that no longer grow and I, actually its example is existing in the physical world. They're genetically modifying seeds not to reproduce. So that you have to go to Monsanto to buy the seed from them when Allah made it to be free. The corn would come, grow into the dirt and more co corn would come. They stopped the reproduction so that you had to buy new seeds. It's ironic that Prophet would teach that in the last days. Means that this modification that we actually see in the physical realm, there's going to be a great famine and great disasters upon this earth because they took out the ability of Allah's system for rejuvenation. Why? For the sake of the, their wanting prophets. So then what happens now if you can't plant those seeds that they give you? The seeds that you have don't reproduce anymore. So they are now preparing for a great famine to begin to affect on earth. If that source stops and it's not reproducing itself then that's the lifting of knowledges, lifting of realities, lifting of even Allah's ni'mat and food upon this earth. So it means that when the people whom don't want to plant themselves, don't want to isolate themselves, don't want to bring their realities out, then they're just a bunch of seeds and nobody can do any benefit with seeds. Not on the physical realm because you can't eat the seeds, they don't feed you like the tree is supposed to and on the spiritual realm that just talking seeds, inshaAllah. Mm. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi the latest, the latest video is entitled, This is a gift that only comes once. Mm. I feel an opportunity came and I slapped it away. Oops. What do I do now because I'm still being permitted to listen to the videos? <clears throat> well, it's good to, to, to think that way, that this is not a, a bus I'll take at any time. Oh forget it, I'll take the next one that we have to cherish what Allah gives to us and the, the teaching is that never pass an opportunity for tomorrow. Means when Allah inspires you to do this, do this action, do, do this prayer, do these things, these are opportunities that, that they may not come a second time. If we live our life thinking they don't come again that I should then act on all of these inspirations and these good deeds then we would be a much more successful in our spiritual path. But if we think that, oh I can pass this one, the next one comes, then Allah may change the system. And we needed that for barakah, we needed what we were inspired to do for a blessing. We passed that blessing and then all of a sudden a difficulty opened upon us. And that's, that's the danger. That that every opportunity Allah gives to us, don't procrastinate and do it at a different time or not do it at all. That was the whole talk tonight. Is the qurban is not something small, oh I'll do it next week. But that next week is not the tajalli. The tajalli of hajj and is the completion of your hajj and to receive the tajalli of arafah then it has its own reality. Qurban at a different time is for a different reality. So, I mean Allah gives to us all these opportunities, all these abilities to learn. So alhamdulillah we try to act on as much as we can and it's a sign of showing gratefulness to Allah that He keeps giving and keeps sending these blessings and these opportunities inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, what is the reality of deja vu? Is recurring deja vu a bad sign? No, it's not a bad sign because everything already been written. There is no past, there is no future and all there is in reality is present because that realm of light has no time. So the soul is from the world of light and has no time. It's actually very ancient the reality of the soul. We live in a physical plane with a timeless soul. So then you can see now the, what's happening. 
So when the timeless element within us is moving timelessly, going back, going forward, it does whatever it wants on this timeline. When Allah grants the physicality of permission that to go forward or backward or get a glimpse of what happened backwards or forwards, then we begin to understand a little bit of deja vu. Means that the soul saw something that happened, it's already been written, this life been written, the book been written and they say all of existence but a blink of an eye. We live within that blink of an eye. Don't think that this life is based on we move and Allah's writing and then move and Allah write again for what you're going to do. Because you don't even make a program like that and this life is a software program. It's already been written how it will end and how it will begin, how it will end. So the spiritual inclination is, oh I've seen this happen huh? because the soul has seen what happened, the soul has understood the past, the soul has understood the, f uh, the future because it's moving in a timeless dimension of light. So these are just glimpses of that reality in which, oh I've seen this what happened and that becomes more of an understanding that leads a lot of people towards spirituality. The word kokhash or, or little experiences that Allah gives, they say, how does that happen? I, I've seen this happen or how's this thing? Then they search out more spiritual realities to understand what's, what's this understanding and many people who can meditate and contemplate they can actually park the physical body and begin to move through their soul. If they move through their soul, they can go back into the world of light and take the knowledges from those times or they can go all the way to the forward and the events that are happening in those times. And that's why they would describe that when Mawlana Shaykh Sultanul Awliya would speak, you, you need shaykhs to be interpreting for you because his hal and his states would be of a timeless nature. You think he's talking to you from right now today but he can be witnessing something 20 years in the future and talking as if he's right there, right in front of them talking to them. And then people were acting and trying to take actions based on that but that's not the, that's not the case. That these, they, they speak from a very timeless reality and their, their knowledge is, is years in advance. If somebody has inclinations and oh they see what's happening tomorrow or they ex express what's happening tomorrow, theirs can be 30, 40, 50 years out. Their firasal is so far out into that world of light that they can be speaking of events that, that haven't happened and will not happen for many, many years or they go back into that reality and pull the knowledges and reality at that time fresh from that moment. So our whole existence is like a book with pages and we're only living on a physical understanding at a physical plane. But the world of light is timeless, Allah has no time. So there's no relevance of time in the malakut. That's why anything that Allah is speaking about it's timeless. We're trying to deduce it or reduce it into a timed understanding and that's where many people are different with spiritual teachings and spiritual knowledges. Spiritual knowledges are trying to recalibrate people back to a timeless reality. When they say that the Sayyidina Isa is coming, you don't have to wait for that physically and don't be preoccupied by it but start to meditate because Sayyidina Isa Salaam then must be always coming and the tajalli must always be present and you're to connect with the tajalli that's eternal. Not only the physical event but the spiritual ruhani understanding that has no time inshaAllah. That's why timeless reality, right? Because you want to lock yourself from physical and begin to enter into these spiritual realities that have no time and they are immensely powerful and that's why Prophet established that, right? So he established Einstein's theory before Einstein. Einstein was talking about time travel, said, if we were to ever accomplish time travel, if we were on the earth, we left and came back, 
70 years of time would have elapsed. So then Prophet was teaching on Isra of Miraj, he went and came back and his bed was still warm into the seven heavens and described that, oh his bed and his place of sleep was still warm. Then he was teaching that one hour of tafakkur is like 70 years of worshipness. Well that before Einstein understood. So Prophet's foundation for all of these realities of light were well established and the, the precedence for it was well understood that the ability to travel and Prophet's miracle was not by soul but by actual physical presence was sent to Allah into a realm in which pressure and all the laws that we understand now are not capable. And they don't understand how with physical presence something could move with that speed into those dimensions, right? Well they still have that same problem now when they're looking at UFOs. They don't, they don't understand a UFO that goes 6,000 miles an hour and then makes a left turn, just like that, right? So if this was normal understanding, if you tried to turn at 6,000 miles an hour what would happen to you? You would smash against the window because the, the gravitational force would throw you in a different direction. They didn't understand it. So then they say, well if that UFO is moving and, and it's changing like that it must have its own gravitational field that's not from this earth, it produces its own field. So it actually moves as if it's not relevant to how fast it's, tra it's traveling. Wow. So now they're getting closer to understanding. If Allah want to put a field around Prophet and move him within the seven heavens, wow. you're seeing it now, they're seeing UFOs go 7,000 miles an hour and then turn and the, the pilot says, uh, what kind of technology is that? Because Allah wants to show them. No, the Isra wa Miraj was very real because some two-mindy people are saying, no maybe it was by soul. No, it was by physicality. If Allah want to put a gravitational field around Prophet and move him through the seven heavens, nothing is relevant. So they have ships now, they go 6,000 miles an hour and they enter into the ocean and they don't see a splash. Have you seen the, sh the TikTok videos they're showing? They don't splash into the ocean. How? How did this go 6,000 miles an hour into an ocean? They have their own field that it doesn't even have to do with the, the ocean field. So it means all of these Allah begin to, to show. This world of light and these sciences that they know, there are other sciences that they don't know. And that's what's coming onto the earth is the knowledges that they don't know. They encompass but very little of what Allah gave of understandings. So these become an era of all these movements and fast movements and, and uh, time transport and teletransporting which are all real, all established by Prophet The teletransported into the heavens and that was not one mirage but they say it was 24,000 mirages into the Divinely Presence. In Sidrat al-Muntaha where Prophet was continuously in a mirage into the Divinely Presence, not stopping once. Allah doesn't invite once, He's generous. When Allah invites it's a continuous invitation, inshaAllah. Salaam Sayyidi Yaqul Salaam Ramatullah. Sayyidi, if the soul is perfect and pure, can you expand on who is the one being punished or rewarded? in the afterlife and the reality of hell? Mm. The nafs, because nafs is from Jahannam, the nafs not from heaven. From the, the pit of Jahannam Allah created the nafs and that's why the nafs has an affinity to the shaitan. So the real shariq, when we say la shariq, there's no shariq with Allah there was never a capability of being shariq with Allah but the partnership that Allah is warning us is that don't let your nafs levitate back to shaitan because he's from that fire, he's very familiar with shaitan and they seem to always want to be friends. So our fight and our struggle is not to let the nafs listen to shaitan and not to make a partnership against Rahman and the soul. 
and in, in difficulty Allah is making the nafs to manifest all these characters. That's when we describe the talks on khalwa and seclusion. And they enter into seclusion they realize that all the bad character that they're achieving on this earth actually manifests into creatures because they're energies. And in the seclusion they face all the creatures that they brought into that grave with them. So if they were like angry mean people they were like wasps. So in the seclusion their energy would manifest as wasps and these wasps would begin to attack them because you brought into that seclusion yourself and your energy. Same with the ghabr. Why Allah wants us clean now before the grave is because you're going to bring a lot of bad things into that grave with you and as a result those are the things that your nafs brought and you have to fight those and, and clean those and, and face those. The soul, no, the soul its only pain is going to be separating itself from the nafs which the nafs has like claws that want to dig in to the soul and hold it. The soul is pure and clean and separates itself and then Allah was, Allah begin to punish the nafs. And the punishment comes to the nafs and the creature that it has made of itself. But the soul is, is, is to be cleaned and set aside. So it's the nafs and the bad animal, the bad creature that people have made of themselves and their actions. And Allah punished that reality and the soul to be cleansed, cleaned and presented. And under the intercession of the Prophets and all the Prophets give their intercession to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad in which Prophet will make du'as and intercede and present those souls pure and purified back to Allah's Divinely Presence inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa basiri Surat al-Fatiha.